founding of Weagle Tool Works was on a Saturday, the day before Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. One, zero, all engines My work has afforded me the opportunity to visit um, all of the major stamping manufacturers in North America. When I think of Weagle Tool, world class are the two words that come to mind. And I don't throw that around lightly. From their tooling and engineering on through manufacturing, uh, quality, customer service and support and sales, anybody that would take the time to come here and visit, I think that they come to the same conclusion. I talk to uh, uh, folks about Wiggle Tool in the industry because I think they've set the bar high. They may be a small company, but they sure do act big. They came here with a dream. They came here through Ellis Island with $10,000 in their pocket. So they, they eventually wound up in Chicago. My, my grandfather worked at various locations without, in the, within the city. And he says, you know what, being a stubborn, no, German. He says, yeah, I want to do this on my own. So he started his own operation. He took all their money. They opened this Weagle Tool Works. He lost $10,000 the first year. They were bankrupt. My grandfather convinced my grandmother, hey, I'm going to turn a profit. Just hear me out. Grandma says, you better figure it out. You better figure it out. And they worked harder and harder, and they actually made 20000 And then it just started to build from there. So when times got bad, we always, they always went back to make these washers to keep the business floating while other things were coming and going. We still run these washers because it was my grandpa's legacy. And we still haven't changed the prices in like maybe 30 or 40 years because that's the backbone of our company. I was fortunate to work for Otto. And this is back in 1963, so we were still in the space, early parts of the space age. So Otto brought this big cast iron piece to me and I'm working on it. And the German guys come by and they said, you know what that is? That's for the Lunar Moon Project. I said, it is? Yeah, and I believe that. I'm 18 years old, what do I know, right? That's so Otto comes by to check up and see how the progress is going, you know, and he says, you know what that is? I said, yeah. I said, it's for the Lunar Moon Project. Well, he started laughing and just laughed and laughed and laughed. It's kind of amazing because, you know, they took the picture and I realized and I saw it once and I'm like, wow, that's actually me. I served in the Navy from 1965 until 1968 when I was going back to Vietnam for the fifth time. And I got a notice in the Red Cross, my father was dying. I got out of the Navy, get, drove my car back to Chicago, May 1968. And that was my first day officially back at Weagle Tool Works. My dad has always been my role model and, and uh, I've always looked up to him. And even growing up as a kid, you know, seeing him in charge of, of the business with the employees looking up to him as peers amongst different associations, it was just something that I've always wanted to, to emulate and follow and I just went with it and, and uh, set my goals and, and did that. I was given, at that time, a boss in the U.S. Navy. He taught me a management style that I'll never forget. He never, ever, ever gave me an order. He always gave me a suggestion. What would you do? Not do it, what would you do? Those three years with that future admiral gave me the basis for how I would run my business. I don't ever remember giving anybody in my company an order. I gave him suggestions and what do you think? And that came from my three years in the Navy with Commander Daniels. There's pictures of me when in, in diapers and, and company parties here. So when they say, when, he, when have you started working for, for Weagle, I say since birth. Weagle Turks has always been my second home. I, I was raised here. Um, I would say that my earliest memories included my brothers and I playing laser tag throughout the shop. And my first job consisted of stripping chrome off threads for a bicycle company. I think family's everything. 
you know, the first time I got to see um, Arrow with Erica after she bought it, you know, we talked about, oh, you know, this is, is this a scary step for you? What are you going to do? And one of the things she said, my brothers won't let me fail. You know, we're family. We work together. We support each other. My family is small, but with this company, I have a very large extended family, and I, view, I feel them as if they're all my real family. I've seen my dad personally donate people money or loan people money for their car or their mortgage or their rent, or my dad giving his car to an employee that couldn't make it to work. That's, that's all a part of my family, culture, values. That's what we try to spread in the company. And back in 2008, when the recession hit, that's one of the best memories I've had from uh, from the owners, uh, taking care of taking care of their their employees while we were going through that rough uh, time. My wife was uh, hospitalized earlier this year, and Elsa came and cut her hair in the hospital and brought her food regularly. It, it's a big family rather than just doing a tax return. Aaron we used to have company picnics. He was like. In between our feet, I'm like, man, just, you know, move on, will you? And now they are leading the company. It's like, you know, you can see this whole growth, just amazing. Well, the third generation, I never had talked about them joining the business. I just never assumed that anybody would be joining the business. People had to sell out their companies that they all admired and loved because none of the children wanted to go in the family business. I was one of the fortunate, fortunate few to have that blessing where all my children that followed me wanted to go into the family business. And the improvements that Ryan has made to the shop has been unbelievable. I mean, we have one of the nicest shops ever to work in. And then Erica on top of it, starting her own business. So it's been really fun and exciting to see really all three of them grow. I don't know if I can be where I'm at today without my brother and sister. And, and I have my dad next to us advising us along the way. You know, he means everything to me. He's, he's, he means everything to me, to our family, to our extended family. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it just brings tears to my eyes sometimes. But uh, I want to emulate them every way I can, and I want to continue this tradition, and I don't let them down. They've never changed their uh, formula, I guess, for how they run a business. They always wanted to be clean. They always were fair to the people. They always invested in the best equipment. They're very honest people. We have a lot of high school students that make parts and pieces in their classroom and then compete against each other. And the Weagles have been a great support of that program. This is not a nine to five job. Uh, not everybody tends to share that belief, but uh, again, the younger generation here does. I get emails early in the morning, calls later in the afternoon on weekends. As this industry changes, it's nice to see that the young people take pride in what they do. I don't know, I'll be retired by then. <laughs> Instead of uh, having gigantic stamping presses, uh, we, we probably have a lineup of uh, 3D printers turning out uh, parts. You know, hopefully I, I get married by then and have a you know, fourth generation. So that's always the goal, right? So to pass along, we'll, we'll see what happens. In another 75 years, if Aaron and Ryan are still around at that time, uh, They'd probably have to eat better and drink better, but if they were around, they'd probably be making more metal stamping that's going to go into things that are flying around. I could imagine robots running the whole place. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be exciting to see what they're doing. You know, maybe they'll be working on Mars. I don't. You know, I don't know. In 75 years from now, uh, maybe the whole block will be go to work. <laughs> Stay healthy, work hard, have fun spending your money. I think it's important for them to trust their instincts and just stay the course. Get that fourth generation going um, into the process, boys and girls. Keep looking to invest in the talent, in, in the youth that are going to be uh, your future managers, your future foremen, future leaders of the company. I think it's important um, to remember going forward that constantly um, being able to infuse the company with new talent, with cutting edge technology, and just continue to grow and go down that path is, is a very wonderful thing. And to always be able to look to other people for advice. We have grown in strength internally. We've grown in being recognized as a world player. 
Our name has uh, merit. My word was my bond. Integrity came first. Everything else is second. I've left you a world-class organization that's going to grow, and you have the opportunity to grow with it. And I think the next 25 years are gonna be unbelievable.